So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the, like, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell you their champs. Now let's have a look at this Razor Blade RTX version. Ah, uh, yeah, this is take two for me because the Mac keeps on crashing. I cannot wait to get another Windows laptop. Um, this is a good one, actually. Speaking of good laptops, yes, the new Razer Blade 15, this is the RTX version. This one comes with the i7-8750H. You can get the models with the 9th generation processors in them as well. If you don't know the difference between the 9th and the 8th generation processors in terms of gaming performance, check out my video. I'll leave a link in the description or a card up here. What it boils down to is the 9th generation is a better chip, less wattage for the same sort of frequency. It boosts higher. Generally, gaming, it can do like 100 megahertz more, sometimes 200, depending on CPU usage. And it will be faster in games. It's not a big deal. It's like only, you know, you can probably count on your hand how many extra frames you'll get, you know, three to five, and sometimes it doesn't make a difference at all. But if they're around the same price, get the 9th gen. If you can get a deal on the one of the 8th gen models, yeah, certainly do that. This also comes with an RTX 2060 full version, not Max-Q. There is a Max-Q version of 2060 as well. You can get up to RTX 2080 Max-Q as well. Now, this full RTX 2060 is nearly as fast as an RTX 2070 Max-Q. And actually, it was faster in some things, like when I compared it to the Aero with a 9th generation CPU and an RTX 2070 Max-Q. There was a couple of games it was actually faster. That's because it's a full RTX 2060. But generally, the RTX 2070 Max-Q is faster, but it's not a big gap. This also comes with 16 gigabytes DDR4. You can upgrade the RAM, of course, and the SSD in there, the M.2 SSD. And in the description, I'll leave a link to my recommended RAM for upgrading these laptops and recommended SSDs for upgrading these laptops as well. Also sports a 144Hz display. You have the option of 240Hz display and a 4K OLED touch display. Now, a lot of people ask me, what should I get? The 240Hz or the 144Hz? In terms of quality, they're both good. The 240Hz, as Bob has said, Bob of all trades, check him out. Yeah, it's a little bit brighter. Quality, very similar between the two. They're both very good displays, but 240Hz. It sort of future-proofs your laptop, like you can add an eGPU later and get benefits out of 240Hz. But if you're only going to be gaming on the laptop itself, I don't recommend a 240Hz unless it's not costing that much more or you have the RTX 2080 Max-Q. Or if you play something like, you know, CSGO or Overwatch or something like that, which you can get your 200 frames per second to make the most out of that display if you play those sort of games. But a lot of games, you'll struggle to get 144 frames per second, never mind 240. So anyway, at the end of the day, it's a good gaming laptop. Thermals, compared to the last Razer Blade I tested, were a lot better, not reaching 100 degrees. CPU will go over 90, but, you know, just. It can maintain higher clocks than the last last razor blade I reviewed it could just be down to unit variations but certainly the CPU clock never went under 3 gigahertz even playing battlefield so you're going to get that 35 to 45 watts depending on the game you're going to have a CPU frequency in the threes up to 3.9 and if you have the ninth generation up to 4.0 so the thermals are good I will say it's a little bit louder than the arrow I just tested but the CPU in this one can maintain higher clock speeds it doesn't have the Ethernet, but all the other ports are there. You know, your USB Type A's has Thunderbolt 3, thank God for that, and your HDMI, etc. Only one M.2 slot, and if you get the base model, you, you can get a hard drive in it as well. But let's see how it games and have a look at its gaming benchmarks. In the brackets, I'll put the benchmarks from an RTX 2070 Max-Q of the Aero 15, which also sports a 9th generation CPU. So very close, right? That full RTX 2060 in this Razer Blade can compete very well with an RTX 2070 Max-Q and a couple of games that beat it. So there you go. That is what it is. You can watch a full GTA 5 benchmark after this. And just remember when you're looking at the game captures, it's important to concentrate on the thermals and the frequencies, not so much the frames per second. Because when I actually record the gameplay with Shadow Play, you do lose a few frames per second, which will be resolved very soon because I'm getting my capture card. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. 
The Razer Blade 2060 is no joke. The full 2060 giving you great performance and a thin and light laptop. I love the design of this. I love the style of it. I love using that trackpad. That trackpad is really good. It's nice, big. Yeah, it's a good gaming laptop. I'll have my full review out very soon. I'll catch you next one, guys. Sally Ho. Mm -hmm.